in the wake of a historic and contentious referendum that could alter the map of South America, a decision that echoes through the corridors of power and the dense forests of Essequibo. Venezuela's recent vote casts a long shadow over its neighbor, Guyana, threatening to ignite a centuries-old territorial dispute with new intensity. But what does this mean for the people whose lives are woven into the very fabric of this contested land? How will the echoes of history and the roar of modern geopolitics shape the fate of Essequibo and its inhabitants? As the world watches, tensions rise and allegiances are tested. We delve deeper into this complex, emotion-charged conflict, exploring not just the geopolitical implications, but the human stories at its heart. Join us as we dissect the aftermath of Venezuela's decisive move, the responses it has provoked, and the uncertain path that lies ahead for Guyana and the region. In this follow-up to our previous coverage, we delve into the aftermath of the pivotal referendum, peeling back the layers to reveal not only its outcomes, but the deeper implications for both Guyana and Venezuela. We'll explore each nation's stance, their claims, and the paths they are now charting in the high-stakes geopolitical landscape. For those who joined us previously, this is the next chapter in a story that is reshaping a region. And if you are new to this unfolding drama, we invite you to first watch our earlier video for context. You'll find it linked in the description below. Today's journey takes us deeper into the heart of a conflict that is about more than lines on a map. It's about history, identity, land, oil, and the intricate dance of international diplomacy. Stay with us as we navigate the turbulent waters of this ongoing dispute, where every decision could tip the balance of a fragile peace. The Referendum On Sunday, December 3, 2023, Venezuela had a referendum on whether they approve of the government's ideas of incorporating the disputed territory of Essequibo into Venezuela as a new state. Essequibo, as you recall, is currently part of Venezuela, west of the Essequibo River, and accounts for nearly two-thirds of Guyana. According to the Venezuelan electoral authorities, over 95% of the electoral respondents approved of the idea. So several questions remain. What will the country do next? And why is Venezuela so determined on the territory now? A quick recap. Let's briefly go over the historical, political, and economic points behind the conflict. Essequibo is 160,000 square kilometers of dense rainforest to the west of Guyana. As with many territorial disputes, this one dates back to the colonial era when the Dutch handed over Guyana to the British in 1814. This handover, however, did not properly define the western boundary of the country of the then British Guyana, but the British effectively administered most of the area as Essequibo. It's important to note that Essequibo is a dense rainforest, and administration of the area now is challenging, much less 200 years ago. However, in 1840, the British redrew the map to include all of the Essequibo region. This eventually led to an international arbitration tribunal between the two countries in 1899. This tribunal ruled largely in favor of the British, effectively giving the region of Essequibo to the British, while at the same time, Disgruntled Venezuela effectively accepted the ruling and there was no issue for 63 years until 1962 when they changed their minds officially, reflecting on the 1899 decision. Venezuela and the British agreed on a dispute resolution process through the UN just before Guyana gained independence. Since then, Guyana has continued to administer the territory and while Venezuela never officially withdrew its claim, it effectively left the country alone until 2015. But why 2015? In the late 2010s, oil was being discovered off the coast of Guyana, especially around Essequibo. The first significant discovery was in 2015 by Exxon, and since then the country has seen a rapid increase in its oil discoveries and extraction. The small country of Guyana is becoming an oil hotspot and has estimated reserves of 11 billion barrels per capita, the fourth highest in the world. Currently producing 400,000 barrels of oil per day, the country is expected to grow that number to 1.3 million barrels per day in just a few years. As can be expected, the Guyanese economy has skyrocketed, with the country seeing GDP growth of over 20% during the pandemic when most countries were in decline. 
This has led to spillover economic effects in Venezuela, with Venezuelans fleeing the country in search of economic opportunities in Guyana. Venezuela has become interested in this oil boom in the country and knows if it claims Essequibo, it can also claim some of its offshore oil reserves through its exclusive economic zone. Guyana has taken Venezuela back to the court through the International Court of Justice to settle the dispute, but Venezuela refuses to participate, claiming the ICJ has no jurisdiction on the matter. The Referendum Back to the present. The most recent escalation of the events transpired on Sunday the 3rd of December, when the results of the referendum according to the Electoral Commission was a resounding yes. The referendum essentially asked, if Venezuelans agreed to incorporating the region into the country as a state. As one can imagine, Guyana's response was visceral and the country accused Venezuela of preparing an annexation of the country. Tensions have increased further as Venezuelan troops have been deployed around the border, though Venezuela claims this is to carry out operations against illegal mining. This has since not only caused worry for Guyana but also for Brazil which responded by boasting its military presence in the region. The referendum, however, has come under scrutiny from the international community. According to the Venezuelan government, more than 95% of Venezuelans who voted selected yes on each of the ballot questions, with more than 10.5 million people turning out in a country of 20 million eligible voters. According to media sources, Venezuela is notorious for its lack of election integrity not to mention a 95% majority support on any public resolution is unheard of. Add to this, the international media reports show that there were very few people at polling stations, which has led many to claim that these are falsified results. What next? Immediately after the referendum, results were reported. President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela stated that, quote, the vote was the first step of fighting for what is ours, unquote. Subsequently, Venezuela has increased its rhetoric and actions in support of the referendum, most notably releasing a video declaring its readiness to support the outcome of the referendum. It is important to note here that if Venezuela decides to take the country by force, there is not much that Guyana can do. The country's total population is only 800,000 people or 4% of Venezuela. Venezuela is much larger economically and militarily too and can easily roll over the South American and Caribbean country. This is why Guyana has instead focused on garnering international support, firstly through the ICJ, and the court proceeds to finalize its claim on the territory. The ICJ has ruled that Venezuela shall not make any territorial moves against the region and even ineffectively prohibited the country from holding the referendum. Secondly, Guyana has appealed to its South American neighbors, most notably Brazil, CARICOM and the United States. Whew, pause for a moment to reflect. If our journey through these complex and vital issues is resonating with you, we invite you to like and subscribe to our channel. Your engagement not only supports our work, but also joins a growing community committed to understanding and appreciating the intricate tapestry of Caribbean and global events. Together, let's continue to seek insight, awareness and inspiration. Let's now examine how will the region respond. Brazil's new president Lula has taken a balanced approach by shoring up its defensive capabilities along the border, by shoring up its defensive capabilities along its border between the two countries, but it remains unlikely that it would move to the defense of Guyana. The only road infrastructure that connects Venezuela with Guyana passes through Brazil, so without Brazil's support, Venezuela would find it extremely difficult to forge a way through the dense rainforest into Guyana. The relationship between CARICOM and Venezuela, however, has been souring. The Regional Economic and Political Union has been a supporter of Venezuela in the international sphere for decades. But this long-standing support for the country is under strain as CARICOM, which includes Guyana, is aligning with Guyana and has asked the country on several occasions to abide by the International Court of Justice ICJ's rulings. The United States' perspective on this matter is slightly more complicated. On the one hand, the Biden administration would like to see democratic elections in the country and has loosed its oil sanctions against Venezuela in exchange for electoral integrity and, yes, to reduce the current price of oil. On the other hand, however, the history of the United States intervening in South America is clear and its American oil companies like Exxon, 
that are poised to make big financial gains in Guyana's oil boom. Not to mention that Guyana has been described as an important democratic partner. What will happen next? It is becoming clear whether a military intervention and an annexation of the region is likely. From a military and practical standpoint, an offensive into the region would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. Essequibo, as we stated earlier, is extremely dense and sparsely populated, and Guyana has long left the region underdeveloped meaning transportation logistics would be methodically slow and mostly result in many casualties, many of which would be of natural causes. Another method is to engage a naval war first, and then a naval-to-land invasion of the region. However, Venezuela's naval fleet is woefully inadequate, and its ability to even sustain its border claim through the Amazon would be a tall ask, but is much more likely. Whether the country will take that big step and annex the region from Guyana is unknown. But what is known is that if it chooses to do so, it will be a long and difficult conflict. Most likely, the country will use its biggest military and the threat of invasion as leverage against Guyana to sign some concessionary agreement in its favor outside of the ICJ. Whether this may be in the form of giving up partially the region of Essequibo or financial compensation for the territory. The future of Guyana remains undetermined. It seems the arbitration agreement of 1899 and the subsequent ICJ court proceedings are a thing of the past and that Venezuela will most likely pursue its claim to the full extent that it can, regardless of any historical precedent. The path forward will continue to remain uncertain, but the hope remains that a diplomatic solution can be found that avoids any war and bloodshed. The reality, however, is that Guyana is a small country going against the claims of a country 20 times its size and if conflict were to break out in the region, it is unlikely that it will get military support from any country of significance. So what do you think will happen? Will Venezuela annex Essequibo? Or is it a bluff? If you would like us to do more similar videos on Caribbean politics, like other disputed territories in the Caribbean, let us know in the comment section below. Before we part ways, if this deep exploration has enlightened and engaged you, we ask for your support. Please like this video to show your appreciation, subscribe to our channel for more insightful content, and share this with your friends and network to spread awareness. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ensuring you never miss out on our future explorations. Your interaction is vital in helping us bring these crucial stories to the forefront. Thank you for being an integral part of our community. Take care and see you in the next video. This is Gyri Caribbean.